This primary school has raised over $170 million from investors like Mark Zuckerberg and Peter Thiel's Founders Fund. It's called Alt School, and it wants to change the way we think about education through technology. I'm Max Ventil, I'm the founder and CEO of Alt School. I had been at Google and left to start a company called Aardvark that they acquired in early 2010. Uh, at the same time, my daughter was two years old and we were in the thick of thinking about preschool. My daughter is such a different person than I am and the world that she's gonna grow up in is so different than the world that I grew up in. That future is gonna demand of her this ability to kind of constantly make her own path instead of you know following a roadmap that's given to her. And her education needs to prepare her for that. Alt School was founded in 2014. The startup relies on technology to personalize lesson plans and regularly evaluate student progress. Although technology is at the heart of Alt School, most of the learning takes place offline. It is really hard to run a bad school, let alone a great school. And so to kind of manage that complexity, to manage that challenge, traditional schools have to simplify. And they do that through making a number of assumptions, like the future is largely similar to the past, or 10-year-olds are pretty much the same. None of those assumptions turn out to be true. In old school, if you look at what are the objectives that 10-year-olds are pursuing, the vast majority of them are not 10-year-old objectives. They're things that an 11-year-old or a 12-year-old or 13-year-old would be expected to work on, and in other areas, maybe they're behind, and you know they're working at a 9-year-old or an 8-year-old level in some domain. Personalizing education is pretty easy to do on a screen. The problem is now kids are on a screen, which is in many ways the last thing that you want. So the challenge for us is how do you personalize education off of a screen? A pillar of all school and any school is assessment. And assessment needs to be accurate, it needs to be actionable, it needs to be non-invasive. And that's hard. How do you get a signal about what kids are learning and what they know and what they don't know, you know, not just once a week, but once a day, once an hour, once a minute. And again, that's where technology can come in. You can allow kids to kind of naturally learn in an emergent way. And you can give tools to teachers so that they can document in real time. One of the teacher's favorite pieces of technology in the classroom are these cameras mounted on the walls, but they're not here for security. At the end of the day, teachers can play back the video to figure out what part of the lesson worked and what didn't. We believe a generation from now, the best education can be the one that the most kids get rather than the fewest kids get. That education will be intensely personal, will be intensely offline, but it will tie back to a digital representation of what's happening. So you'll be able to use technology to be much more flexible, to be much more coordinated, to be much more rigorous, and allow an experience that, you know, in many ways looks totally untechnical. If you believe that to really be part of a solution for, you know, a very different education in the future versus now, you need to bring technology and great traditional education together.